Uh, hello, my name is Jim Patterson and I am from Santa Cruz, California in the United States. Uh, I got my start in photography, serious photography, back in the year 2001 and it was scuba diving and underwater photography that really caught my passion. Nowadays I have found a lot more inspiration from landscape photography and uh, along the coast of California where I live is extremely beautiful. It's a rugged and beautiful coast and that's where I get uh, my current inspiration from. My full-time job is actually working for a scuba diving store in Santa Cruz and uh, that's actually my main source of income. Photography is a serious hobby that is starting to pay some of the bills. <laughs> but as with all photography, the equipment is uh, pretty expensive. So I really enjoy teaching and uh, seeing how people that are learning, how excited they can get about photography. Because um, I was that once that same way, and to some degree I still am. I feel like I'll always be an amateur and I'll always be learning. Uh, and to see people's eyes open up when they take photographs that they're proud of is extremely pleasing. In the first roll of slide film that I got back from a scuba dive that I had done where uh, looking through that transparency you know of course it was Velvia 50 speed uh, and it was just crisp and full of details and vivid and um, almost brought a tear to my eye <laughs> because I realized then how good photography could be uh, I mean, I'd say with, with Photoshop, uh, the biggest post-processing thing that I like to use a lot of is luminosity masks. And I'm actually going to be giving a talk about them tomorrow. Um, because they're not a, uh, something that you can find under the filters or the tools section of Photoshop, um, you need to create these luminosity masks yourself. And uh, I use them a lot in my post-processing. No, they're, they're, once you know how to make them, they're extremely easy to use. Um, and it's, it's just something that once you've seen the steps and tried a few times, it'll become second nature. I would say that when it comes to the commercial aspect of photography, I don't see, think that I would ever do portraits or weddings. Um, I just don't feel as comfortable photographing people. But uh, in terms of something very much the opposite of underwater and nature photography, uh, I love basketball and I think it would be awesome to be a, a sports photographer at an NBA basketball game. So. Just no neutral density. Uh. No, no, just, just capturing the action and, and mostly having courtside seats where you basically get to sit and have the best view. Well, you think that that does not work. Uh, until someone that weighs 300 pounds lands on top of you, then oh. it's maybe not so fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, despite what a lot of people say, I've heard a lot of people that say that uh, once you make photography a full-time job, it can take the fun out of it. Uh, I want to give that a try. I think I could still have fun being a full-time photographer. So I would like to see my photography be more a part of my full-time income uh, and, and be able to make it work. So I think it can be enjoyable and successful at the same time. No, I haven't actually uh, had any personal experience with other photographers that have maybe been professionals for longer, having problems with that. Um, I've read plenty of articles online, blog articles, and about professional photographers having a hard time now because there's such a growth in photography with digital that there's a lot of images available to publishers that weren't there before um, and that amateurs sometimes are willing to give their images away for free which can undercut the market. Uh, the first camera I ever had was an old Canon SLR, some sort of uh, EOS, I don't know what it was, it was a Christmas gift and it's suffered a, a, a sad fate. I put it on top of the car one day and drove off and heard a thunk and my friend convinced me it was something else and got home and realized my camera was gone. Um, I invested in some Nikon gear uh, about a year later, mostly because uh, a fellow friend of mine had heavily invested in it and I, I figured he had done the research and made it an easy decision for me to follow suit. Uh, ever since then it's just been uh, a matter of convenience. All the lenses still work and I've continued on and I haven't had any problems so I've been really happy with, with that equipment. I currently shoot with uh, the Nikon D300 and I have a 12 to 24 lens, a Nikon 12 to 24, 
I've got their old 35 to 70 for my mid-range. I have a 70 to 200 f2.8 VR. Uh, I also have the 16 f2.8 fisheye lens, a 500 millimeter f4, uh, the old manual focus, and let's see, probably a few other lenses. I've got the 60 uh, micro Nikkor as well as the 105 micro Nikkor. Yes, I, I use a, a variety of neutral density filters, both graduated and solid. Uh, majority of my graduated filters are by Lee, and I have a, a couple Singray as well. Um, my golden blue polarizer is, is definitely a Singray specialty. I don't think anyone else makes something like that. Uh, and then I've also, I have a B&W polarizer as well as a B&W 10-stop uh, neutral density filter, solid neutral density filter. For underwater, I've been using uh, strobes ever since I started. Uh, but for landscape photography, I, I rarely have used a flash. Not that I'm against it, I just uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it. The LED light painting seemed a more maybe natural approach and, and just it's almost like using brush strokes with a flashlight. So uh, that to me seemed like I have a little bit more control over the light as well. For creativity, it's good to have different colored uh, either gels or uh, I use like a little plastic cutout and put it inside the flashlight. So I had a red flashlight and a white flashlight, but you can use any color. Um, other than that, uh, it's, it's a matter of experimenting and, and seeing how even or uneven your, your images are when you do your light painting. But typically a higher ISO. Um, for static stars, if you're going to include stars, maybe a 30 second exposure tops. And uh, just keep checking the, the LCD to see how evenly your lighting was during the shot. Yes, I definitely use a tripod pretty much 100% of the time when I'm doing landscape photography. <laughs> Approximately. Approximately 100%. Um, I do do some, some handheld uh, intentional camera movement where I'm, I'm panning, uh, either with trees or waves. And I hope to give it a try with some wildlife when I visit Kruger. And uh, the other thing that I, I've tried with a tripod is doing a long exposure, but purposely zooming the lens during the exposure. Um, it's just a different type of you know, kinetic photography where you're intentionally putting movement into a scene that doesn't have any. My pocket and pulled the remote out and it knocked the microphone battery um, pack off and that pulled the mic off of my shirt and hit the ground and I was like, it started. <laughs> um, oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah.